Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Westinghouse WGen 7500. And today's topic is going to be bonded versus unbonded. As you can see by this note here, this generator comes neutral bonded to frame. The other option would be a floating neutral or unbonded. I'm not going to get into all the details of what that means, but I am going to link to a video in the description, which is really excellent at explaining it. I'm going to show you what I did on my system. I am not an electrician, so I don't play one on YouTube either. This is just what I did. Use it at your own risk or consult a electrician. So here in my garage, I have my electric panel. I have a transfer switch and I'm going to use one of the electrical outlets to show you how it is set up right now. I'm taking an electric meter and I'm putting it in continuity mode so that it will sound. I'm going to put one probe in the outlet on the neutral and the other one on the ground. So there is a connection between the neutral and the ground wire. Now we're going to do that seam check on the generator. There we go. Now if I were only going to use this generator with extension cords, then it would be fine as is. But when using it on a transfer switch to a house, I would have two different points where the ground is bonded. And that is not a good thing. Consult the video I mentioned for more details on that. So what I need to do to this generator is change it from bonded neutral to floating neutral. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Using 7 millimeter or 930 seconds, I'm going to take off these two screws. Now this procedure is documented in the Westinghouse manual. On some generators, it may void a warranty or it may not be something that is recommended, but Westinghouse makes it very clear with pictures and everything uh, how to do this process. The jumper wire is this little short green and yellow. So here's what we're going to do. Using the same 932nd. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a 5 sixteenths and I'm going to take this nut off. There's a very small washer here as well, so be careful not to lose it. And take everything off of this one and pull out that jumper wire and then put these three back on put in our little washer and then reattach that nut and so if you're wondering what I'm doing okay I'll tighten that up this was actually on the Westinghouse website on what to do with this jumper wire just so that it doesn't get lost in the future and you have it if you need it. So I'm just kind of bending it a little bit. Okay, so all we've done is the jumper wire is just attached to the frame only. It's here if you ever need it, and you could reconnect it. Did that work? Well, let's find out. Nothing. No longer bonded. It is now a floating neutral configuration. So now that the generator is in a floating neutral configuration, um, there wouldn't be a proper ground using extension cords. 
and I can test that just by the same way we tested before. Nothing. But I'm not going to use it in that configuration. I'm going to use it with the connection to my transfer switch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my big cord. The other end is already connected to the transfer switch. And now it should be picking up the ground that exists on my breaker panel. And there we go. So I've now confirmed that my generator is properly grounded when it's connected to my house transfer switch and there is not a double ground uh, because it is no longer bonded to frame. As a final step, this generator needs to be clearly relabeled so that anyone using it in the future knows that it is unbonded and has a floating neutral. So if I were to lend this to someone or use it in an application other than the transfer switch, that ground would need to be reattached. About two weeks after making this video, we had a power failure. I fired up the generator, connected it to the house, and about five seconds later, a power strip in our living room caught fire. What happened and what should you be aware of? Look at the video that I post here.